This is, in my opinion, the easiest way to give yourself a perfect skin fade at home. Let's get into it. I watched a lot of haircutting tutorials online, and they all handle the fade in slightly different ways. But they're all way more complicated than they need to be, in my opinion. If I'm gonna bother to cut my own hair at home, it needs to be quick and give me a solid result every time. And this is the method that I've been using for the last couple of years that does exactly that. The three essential things you'll need are a decent set of hair clippers, a pair of scissors and a handheld mirror. I bought a clipper with a taper lever, because I was told it was necessary for a skin fade, but as long as you have a step size of close to a millimeter, it's fine. Some things that aren't necessary, but could be nice to have are hair clips to keep the hair you don't want to cut from getting in the way, and a barber cape to stay clean from the hair falling down. Before doing anything else, I like to just do the beard so I can match the rest of the haircut to it. I usually do a quick and dirty 3 or 4 step fade without any feathering, and then some light touch-ups around the edges. The main problem I have with the tutorials I've seen is how the layer blending is handled. Let me explain. So the fade is generally done by first cutting a staircase with discrete steps and then blending between those steps to a smooth curve. Some people even recommend to do it in three steps by cutting guidelines first and then doing the staircase and then doing the blending. It's not that it doesn't work or that it doesn't give a good result, but it's just unnecessarily complicated, in my opinion. So I say skip that step entirely and blend right from the beginning instead. Now that we have the general theory out the way, let's start cutting. The first thing I do is shave the back of the neck. I know some people like to do this last, but I also heard the same people complaining that it's easy to cut too far and ruin the fade. It just makes more sense to me to do it at the beginning. The next thing I do is to wet the hair that's gonna be faded and put it away. If you don't have proper hair clips, it could be done with anything from a rubber band to a zip tie or my all-time favorite, a bag clip. Most often I skip this step though, because it's usually not necessary. The next thing I do is cut everything to the longest fading length, and just pull the clipper straight up at the top to get a nice finish. The way to cut the back of the head is normally to stand with your back facing a big wall-mounted mirror, and then look at the handheld mirror in front of you. I, however, got a swiveling cabinet door with a mirror on it, that I used like a handheld one, and then I have a small IKEA mirror taped to the door behind me. As long as you have one mirror in front of you and one behind, and at least one of them can be tilted, you're set. Then finally starting the fade itself, we remove the guards from the clipper, and start at the bottom, carefully doing the twisting motion to get that smooth blend. Getting this blending correct in the beginning, and especially around the ears, is the hardest part of the haircut in my opinion. So I just go very slowly and carefully around this part. For this to work though, it's critical that you have a good and consistent blending stroke, as you have to trust it rather than your eyes. This is the single most important factor in whether the haircut is gonna be any good or not, so I recommend you practice it a bit before you even turn the clippers on. There are a few different ways it could be done, but the general idea is you wanna pull the clipper up and away from the head at a consistent angle. For longer hair, I usually just simply pull it away, most often straight up. And for shorter hair, I like to push the blades away from the head by twisting the clippers. When the line is finally smooth and where you want it, then move on to the next size. For the second layer, I usually just increase the layer by between 1 and 2 millimeters using the taper lever, but a short guard would work fine as well. Where do we position the fade lines though? This is a great question. The easiest way I would say to learn it is just by looking at reference images. Search for images of the haircut you want and try to visualize and maybe even draw the lines that you want to cut and maybe label them with the length you think is appropriate. That's how I've done it. It's different for every kind of haircut. You should take some time and uh, get familiar with what you want. Next up, the half guard. The way I like to do each layer is by starting with the sides facing the big mirror. That way I can make sure that the lines are perfectly faded and at the same height before moving on to the back. Then it's just about connecting the lines and making sure it's straight. Then we move on to the one guard. Another easy mistake to make is the length difference between the different layers. At first you might think, well I'm gonna choose a consistent distance like every two millimeters maybe. But the human eye doesn't perceive absolute change, it perceives relative change. So for the best results for the minimum amount of work, you would want to choose a constant relative change, like increasing with 100% starting from one millimeter. In this example, you would essentially get double the resolution for 25% less work. And last but not least, the two guard. To do the final bit of fade work, Then brush off the excess hair and give your work a good hard look to see if anything needs a touch up. If so, just go in with the appropriate guard and very carefully try to correct it. Tilting the clippers to the side a bit can make sure you don't create any new unwanted lines, but there's really no right or wrong here, just do what needs to be done. Then just clean up the front a bit before doing the hair on top. My philosophy for this mess is a lot less scientific than before. 
I just make it shorter wherever I feel like it's too long and try to keep it somewhat homogeneous. Lifting the hair up between your fingers is gonna help see the length deviations easier and keeping the scissors at a bit of an angle is gonna assist with the natural look. I generally go for a bit shorter on the back and sometimes on the sides as well but you'll pretty quickly realize what works best for you. So uh, there we go, I think that's it. I'm gonna take a shower, see if we missed any spots. I don't know if you noticed, but in the beginning of this video, I actually nicked myself pretty bad in the back of the neck, and that's because the blades on the clipper weren't aligned properly. When you set up your own barbershop, you're gonna have to take care of your own equipment and clean up after yourself, and that's gonna take just about as long as the haircut itself. But in my opinion, to be able to get a fresh cut before breakfast every morning, that's a price worth paying. And that's essentially it. I'll be the first to admit that it's not perfect, and if I would've spent 10 or 20 more minutes, I probably could've cleaned a lot of it up. But I don't, because it doesn't matter. And that's kind of the point of this entire thing. In the real world, no one except for your mom and your barber are ever gonna examine your hair from top to bottom looking for imperfections. They think, oh, he's got a fresh fade, that looks dope. And then they'll move on with their lives. I'd rather get the haircut done in 15 minutes and spend the time I save doing something that actually matters. Cutting your own hair is hard, make no mistake about it. It's gonna take you a while to learn and you're probably gonna mess up a few times along the way. But when you learn it, it's gonna save you a lot of time and money. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Peace.